we do here is go back, 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 back. back. What's up? How's everybody doing today? Uh, let's see here, which one do we need? We need, we need this one. All right, good. So, got you guys a quick little video today planned out. And uh, hopefully it helps some of you guys out. Just let me set up this other camera real quick. So, you guys have obviously, if you've been here for any period of time, you've already seen me do quite a few of these, but I just wanted to go over just some quick ways um, of achieving a design or a piece of art or whatever you want to call it, a piece of work. Um, and uh, we're going to use the skull today. Now this is one of those designs where, um, this is one of those lessons where it might be uh, just a little bit more beneficial to just listen along and uh, maybe you'll learn something, uh, you know, maybe you won't, I'm not going to promise nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over a few things, just a few ways that you could use a simple design like this, a, a picture, um, to create uh, the same piece of artwork in different styles because um, not everybody wants to do it the same way, not everybody likes the way it looks, whatever the case may be. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys out. So all I'm gonna do is just get a piece of paper and some tape real quick. <clears throat> and this will just help serve as a barrier so that we can kind of do these designs little by little. So we'll start here on this left side. We'll just do one at a time and I'll just kind of go over a few quick things. So obviously I'll go over the most basic stuff first and maybe even some of the stuff we've already touched on here before. That sounds like a good place to start. And I'll go ahead and go look at the chat real quick. I see uh, Mr. Chris 420 Dragon. I see RC Boneyard. I see Thomas Thompson. I see Mr. Fings. I see Nameless. I see Bobby Lipford. I say uh, Great Handicapper. <laughs> That's a good name. What's up, Cody Adams? How's it going? And uh, WW. And let's see, I just looks like I missed a bunch here. Uh, la, 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 la. Looks like I got everybody. All right. All right. So, first things first, we'll just lay this down here. Quick little paper just to keep the overspray. And then uh, we're just going to work in this little area here first. So, just to bring you guys in. And then I have this other camera here set up on this and uh, I really need to get one of those little um, one of those little hotkey things so I can just switch the cameras just click, click of a button it's switched and then this one actually we got to get rid of uh, this right here there you go all right so I here I have this printed out multiple times and like I said we're just gonna use the skull for today's little lesson um, but you could really do this using any image. So any project you have and you're just looking at a way of going about it, you're not sure, uh, maybe this video could help you out. Today I'm just working with paper, right? But you could do this, you know, if you use a heavy cardstock paper, maybe you, you maybe use some mylar, maybe plastic, whatever it is that you want to use. Just as an example today, we're going to be using paper. Just to keep it simple. Keeping it simple, keeping it pushing. So, <clears throat> Obviously, the very first thing uh, you want to do, and the very f what we've always done here, and the way I always work them, is just by cutting out the whole thing, right? And uh, I'm just going to do my best to go real quick here, and then I'm going to just show you guys 
how using an image like this, you can get some nice designs. Now, I tried looking for my handle, and I couldn't find it. I walked off with it the other day, and I can't remember for the life of me where I put it. And I really need to just order some extras. But I've been slacking. Not really. I've been just really busy running around with other things. Um, just a quick reminder, we have the new Skull Squad shirts available on the website. A lot of you guys have already placed your orders. I started packing orders today. We'll probably have a lot of stuff go out on Monday. So if you're expecting a tracking number, you'll probably get that on Monday. And I do appreciate all you guys' support so far. Um, but if you're interested in one of those, you want to show the support to the channel, make sure you go you check out the website, mikesbrush.com, and um, get yourself a nice little shirt here. So I'm trying not to apply so much pressure, but I guess it doesn't really matter here because we're cutting on a cutting mat and not on the not on the on the thing itself here. So all we're going to do is cut this guy out. Nothing too major. And um, today we're going to be working with gray and maybe some black. We're just going to start with gray because it's going to make it easy um, to illustrate a few things. So I cut that out. Let me load up some gray and I actually need to go and switch on the air supply. That's the one thing I didn't get ready today. Let me go do that real quick. And I hope that woke some of you guys up. <laughs> Okay, so let me get my gray here. Get this out of the way. That's looking pretty empty. Let me just mix up some gray real quick. Now pro tip, again, since this, this whole lesson and this whole channel is really designed for beginners, if you're not aware, and I see Namlis said something about uh, mix and reduce separate bottles and shake before pouring. Uh, what's up Jim's Airbrush Adventures? Uh, yeah, I do tattoos as well, yes. Uh, you can find some of the work. Yeah, you can find some of my work on my website. I haven't updated pictures in forever. I probably should do that. I really don't take pictures of the tattoos that often anymore. I got a good color. So, like I was talking, if you're new, you could always pre-mix the bottles. So, like I like mixing my Createx and see this one I here have it labeled gray, and it's the Createx Wicked colors. This is the Wicked Opaque white with Wicked Opaque black about 10% reducer mixed in and uh, yeah you're still waiting for him to do live tattoo sh sessions uh, yeah probably not we tried that once we actually did do a tattoo live one time and oddly enough it was on my wife before she was my wife. Um, but nah, it just, it's not, it doesn't work out that way. And um, yeah, let's just, let's just leave it. The tattoo crabs 
it was really, uh, I don't even know what to call it. And the course, that just opens up a whole nother gate of questions. Same way why I didn't post anything about the 3D printer or the laser or any of the other stuff that I'm into on this channel because it just opens up a whole new line of questioning and honestly I'm not the guy to teach that. I'm here to show you about this. You want to learn about airbrushing? I'm the guy. You want to learn about tattoos? I'm not teaching that. So you go learn from somebody else. I personally had to learn tattoos you know, at a tattoo shop with people teaching me. So let me load up some gray here in one of these airbrushes. I'll probably use the clips for this just because make it nice and simple. So I am gonna try to spend some time this week editing. Um videos done up. I just need to get them all put together. Wife and I will make plans to come see you for tattoos. Yeah, make sure you make plans with me as well. <laughs> Once we have this gray loaded, we'll be able to spray and I'll be able to start explaining some things. Oh my god, I'm like, I'm like drawing blanks of what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Oh Jesus, it's been a long day. some of Mike's projects, the Orca, the Createx bottle. It's going real awesome and I just started airbrushing. Look, what's next just to go on with this stuff? How to get better? Uh, just keep practicing. Even though you might have done the project, you could always redo it, make it better. Redo it again, make it better again. Fourth time, make it better. Make it better. Every time you do it, you're going to realize, like, oh, that little thing. That little thing. Also, be real with yourself. There's one thing I've always said. You know, step back. Look at your artwork. Maybe compare it to mine, the one I did in the video at the end, at the end result. See if it looks the same. Compare. Be real with yourself. Put your ego in check. Well, I always say so keep your ego in check and uh, don't try to rush to the races because a lot of people always try to rush off like, oh, I did one great thing. Oh, and I'm the best. And it's just like, wait, 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 wait a minute. You did one thing. That doesn't mean you're the best. And that doesn't really mean that you know exactly what you're doing. And you did it okay. You didn't do it at like a master level or anything like that. So... Even me to today, like I'm showing you these things, but no way in my shape or form do I consider myself like what I've done to be the most definitive version of the best of the best of the best of the, what I could do now and forever. No, tomorrow I'll probably wake up and look at it and go, dang, I should have done this and I should have done that. And it probably could have been better. Keeping my ego in check and being real about what I'm doing. Anyway, <laughs> that's usually how you get better though. Is just being real with yourself, practicing, seeing what you're doing wrong, and working from there. Okay, back to today's lesson. So we have our cutout, we have our first little cutout. Now usually, right, when we're doing the, the tutorials, 
right? And this just be lines, right? I've already converted this to lines for you guys. Today we're using just the actual picture. Um, so usually we just cut it out. We have it stuck on there in place, right? And it doesn't move. And then, you know, we peel off piece by piece, right? That's one way of working a stencil because we are working a stencil when we do those airbrush tutorials, right? So evolving from there, right? Once you have those, those simple tutorials down where you're just following along, you're just peeling off piece by piece, you're just filling in the colors, you know, you're just doing paint by numbers at that point basically, but you're doing shading and you're doing it with an airbrush. We're gonna do a little something a little more different, right? This time we're not gonna stick anything down. We're just gonna use this to produce a design. So there is multiple ways to do this, right? And I'm gonna show you um, with this one sheet, I'll show you one, and then I have another sheet, we'll go in the middle and then I'll show you a more extreme example at the very end. This is gonna be a very general one. Um, and it will still require some freehand work. But all I'm gonna do is I cut out the main design. I'm just gonna come in with some gray. And all I'm gonna do is just hit that edge with some gray. Nothing too crazy. Wham. Simple stuff. So then going back to our cutting mat. And I'll bring this camera back up to you guys. Here is this one. All right, going back to our cutting mat. We have our little gray, you know, outline here. Right now we could put our design back. And uh, you can see that there's all these sections of colors, right? So the easiest way to start working in those colors is to do them from light to dark. So here, you know, I see some areas where I definitely want to fill in with some gray. Obviously the eyes are nice and black and all that, right? We don't want to worry about that right away. But I do see like maybe this side of the face, right? Like over here. You see this area here? It's like darker than this side, right? Like, and then we have this area right up in here. Maybe this area in the brows here, you know, just, some general areas, maybe right here, you see on the edge of the brows going back. Maybe this side of the jaw. It's just a little bit of a shade of a gray. So all I'm gonna do is to work those pieces in, is I'm just gonna start cutting off those areas where I feel it's maybe necessary. Right, and you can be pretty general with it. You don't have to be super specific. About where you're cutting this right, and then you see this piece right here we will bring this down and uh, any of you guys who've seen kind of Steve this is gonna look pretty familiar um, but he goes way in depth um, but generally this is almost what he's doing Now this first method is going to require, maybe it'll require just a little bit of a freehand approach. And you can use the teeth there, maybe mark that off there. And we'll go back and around. And I'll show you guys what my cutout looks like in a minute. So we got all that side cut out right there, right? You see that? So we'll cut out this other piece up here. You can go ahead and cut out the, the eye. And use this brow right here. So I know some of you guys have different kinds of projects going on, and uh, not every project has to be tackled the same way. And 
This is one of those things where it might save you some time. Now, like I said, today I'm just using paper. But one thing I have done in the past is right, see how I'm using this? See, I have that cut out and that cut out, and I have it all on the same sheet. And if I wanted to repeat this process, I could just lay down that thing, lay down the gray, lay down the next area, lay that down, and then lay down the next one, and then move on to the next one. And you would have them all in a nice little sheet, and you could just go and, and do them all. Obviously, on a piece of paper, that's not maybe the best idea, but something to keep in mind if you're gonna like maybe want to do it on a piece of plastic, or if, you know, you just if you have that in mind already that you do want to maybe re redo the design more than once. Um, it might be something worth your time to keep in mind that you could do it on a piece of plastic, on something hard. And again, you don't have to do a skull, you could do whatever you'd like. And I'm just going through cutting some of the designs out. Nothing too crazy. And then maybe we'll do some of these teeth here Again, you gotta be pretty, pretty precise on some of these cuts. But ultimately, we're not trying to make it super detailed. You will still have to do a little bit of freehand or maybe a little bit of work with a brush, but the main idea will be there. So let's switch back over to our, our area we're working here and then I can actually uh, get you closer. Okay, so then we can line up our stencil to our original one. Again, just using that same gray. that area again, just using that same gray, just a little bit darker. See that? Now we're starting to build up our skull. Then last but not least, on this particular design, we could go ahead and cut maybe some of the more darker areas. show you guys something cool in a second though just one second gonna blow your mind all right now we're gonna actually cut out the darkest spots that I see now this particular thing something like this where I create a pattern of stencils like this is something I've done a lot um, like for party favors um, sometimes I'll get projects where you'll get like a, a home crafter that's maybe making a certain um, product and then they just want to design like their logo usually repeated over and over and over and over um, so yeah this is one of those great ways to do that uh, so what's up, 88 Katana? What's up, Carl Becker? You know they make handles for those blades, right? Yes, I already explained that I lost my handle. You, I am the worst. At they usually last about three to four months. That one handle, I was so proud of it because it was like, I've had it forever, it was rusty. But anytime I get a new one, they don't. They get lost. They're like the 10 millimeter socket of blades, man, is the handle. But yeah, I've also done like party favors, like uh, sometimes you'll get like a, um, a quinceanera, a bar mitzvah, something like that where they just want like uh, the, the table things, like the table decorations or just some other various things like that. 
uh, you know, with a design put on it or whatever. And uh, doing this method is a great way to get that done quickly and making it look really nice. And the people have, you know, they don't care. They just know you did an amazing job. They don't care how it was done. So all I'm doing is just cutting in just some of those darker spots here. I see these little dimples here. I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. go in here and we could just if we're nice and careful we could get some of these teeth here right. get that spot maybe get this All right so obviously I'm not gonna go super detailed because it's just for today's little instructional video but all I've done is cut some of the main darkest areas and again, we're just going to go ahead and lay that back in. Right. Now we have our little skull here. Bring this guy right back in there, line it up. Just so it's nice in the right spot. It looks like it's almost there. Right there. Looks about perfect. Get the airbrush. Gonna darken in those last areas. Right. We can peel that off. I probably should do some more work on the teeth. But all I'm gonna do is just kind of come in here. Now we have our pattern, we can use the pattern to just go in here. And the way I'm gonna actually add in the brights, the highlights, the teeth, anything like that, is I'm just gonna darken this up a little bit. I'm just gonna gray it up a little bit. Not be too crazy. All right, I'm gonna just go to sit here for a sec. I'm maybe just do a little bit of freehand work in here, just to get some of the little texture in there, right? I also chose to do it small. Something there, something here. And I'm going to get some of it right here. Or you could always you could spend all day on this. I'm not really trying to do all that. But before we. Uh, Going further, I'm just going to take this stencil and we're just going to cut off some highlighted areas. Some highlighted areas. And we'll load up some white here in a second as well. So we'll go back again. Now, see here, maybe on this side of the skull here we have this big bright spot coming in right here bam cut that off we have this little the whole piece right here coming in spot right here in the middle just kind of follow that little bright spot right there this one right here boom a little bit of a bright area right here put that out Bit of this nose. Right. 
again, you don't have to be super precise with it right now. But the more you are, the more detail is going to transfer. And so I'm going to try to do a little bit of the teeth. Just because I do want some of the detail on the final thing. That's probably good. Just a few of them. Get a little highlight right there. And we'll highlight the edge of the bottom of the jaw right here. Just to differentiate that. We have a little bit of a high spot right here. And again, you could take all day as you like. Kind of going through here. Cutting this all out. For today's exercise, again, that's probably enough. You guys get the point. I've just cut those spots. Right on. What's up, Blue? Tom Timothy Snowden jo joining the Skull Squad. Welcome, welcome, sir. Um, or as Iwata brands, the only ones that fit. Yeah, I would only choose Iwata. Yeah, I would definitely stick with uh, the actual brand. Like a different, different airbrush needles might fit. But that doesn't mean they're the same. So just be aware of that. All right, so let me see here. Let's load up some whites. Oh, just spilled that. Oh, my Createx shirt. It is ruined. Ruined, I tell you. This is definitely a work shirt now. <laughs> uh, what's up, J, uh, a, JM Sickmaid? How's it going? So what's up, Timothy Snowden? Thank you for joining the Skull Squad, sir. the old legs out real quick ah ah what's up Michael McClung how's it going classes were killer were they well we're glad you're back blue even though I've seen you in all the other chats blue don't be talking to snack because I know you where you've been <laughs> I'm just playing <laughs> out there. Alrighty. Get my cap back on here. Good. Cap on that one. Nice. Alright, get this guy lined up. Paint here. I'm just gonna hit these in. 
I'm not trying to go super bright with them because even though you don't see it right away, it is going to change the color of it. So I'm just trying to give it a quick little pass. little sculpt from here you could just go in and you know do your nice little freehand work in here Bam. you have all the base already right there just so you can just do your work So we got our nice little skull right there. Look. Now, even though we made this one out of paper, we still reuse it. So the whole process, even though it's kind of lengthy for the first one, right, the cool thing is that we can now say we would just want to put another guy right here. want to make a string of skulls, you just lay this guy in, get your first little coat of gray, blam, move on to step two, make sure you line it up as best as you can, get in, Little second coat. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. Darkest coat. Now, if you want to load some black in, I wouldn't blame you. We're just trying to keep it simple today. It's just a nice little tutorial for you guys. And just try to line it up as best as you can. Bam, bam, all the way. Get our whites. part of this is always making sure you line those stencils up correctly. Now this paper one, it's already getting kind of wavy from the wetness, you know. There you go. You got the layout done for your next one. And you just kind of go in again. Do your little free hand. See who this is. Hello? Uh, no, you got the wrong number. It's not the pizza place, man. You got the wrong number, man. So, what's up, Airspace? How's it going? freehand work. Again, if you wanted to go more deep in depth with that stencil, you can. I'm 
wouldn't I wouldn't blame you if you did if you went more in depth. If you want to just repeat the process real quick. Um, this process here, I became infatuated with this process after learning about the artist Banksy. So I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Banksy, the graffiti artist. Um, so for a while there, I was uh, like, how does he get that done without people noticing, right? Like, how does he just pull up, spray it, nobody notices? Then I realized he's using stencils. This is my guy. Yes, that first one took me whatever, how long, 30, 40 minutes, right? That second one took me a minute, two minutes, right? It was quick, it was done. Same thing, you could do this for like a lot of stuff. The same thing that I just did here, like say if you're working on this, uh, you're working on a colored background like this, just to show you guys real quick. What we could do, instead of starting off with gray, we start off with a white like this, lay down the base, Switch to the gray. And yeah, after I seen and I kind of studied, I was just like, how's he getting that done? There has to be a secret to getting it done so quick that nobody notices how quick he got it done. And that's when I was like, he's using a multi-layer stencil system that he can just quickly show up. He's already practiced it somewhere else. He just shows up, sprays it, and blam, look at that. In a matter of like a minute. I mean, if this was big, if I was working on something pretty big, I'd probably just end up using like a spray can, you know, making some big, big stencils. I'm using a spray can. And then just coming in with an airbrush, maybe with one of those little handheld compressors or something like that. And there you go. You got the layout for your next skull. All set up. And that's about as much use as we can get out of this uh, paper one. It's all scrunching up and stuff at the edges and stuff. It's going to make it really hard to keep using. Um, but if you were to make it again out of mylar or something like that, you could totally... I've done this, this particular style, this effect, again, for like party favors, uh, maybe on certain things that, like other than shirts, and they just want to get a nice... I've done like roses, I've done, you know, like little filigree type things where you have to lay down the actual gold for the filigree and then lay down another stencil that lays down the shading and then you lay a third stencil that lays down all the nice little intricate, um, you know, lines uh, for your filigree. And in some cases I even uh, went as far as to make a double uh, line thing so that you wouldn't be able to see where the, the line, uh, the stencil ended so that one stencil would flow over where the other stencil was um, just to hide the edges. There we go, we'll, we'll section that one off. And again, this paper, of course, is not very tape friendly, so it ripped. But we'll move on. I'm missing all the chat while I'm trying to explain things. Uh, all right, we're in a filtration system along with carbon filter. Use a mask. Uh, yep, 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Don't cut it short, Mike. Today, no, 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 no. So that was just the first. Right, that was just the first one. Let's move on. Hopefully, that that kind of shows you guys just how you can get a quick little layout and just a quick little way of repeating stuff. Ah, okay. I do need a drink of water though. Let me get a water. Now I'm just running dry from talking. Not letting any dust or airborne particles get in the house. Wow. So yeah, in in the house we don't really run a filtration inside the house, but out here in the shop, I do have air being pushed in from the air conditioner that has the filter on it. Right behind the stand, there is the exhaust for this this inside area that runs into the booth, and then the booth ventilation runs to the outside that also has a filter. Yeah, so I wish everything was as quiet as the fan for the ventilation system because that thing is quiet. <clears throat> okay. All right. So obviously we got that out of the way. Now we'll use the sheet number two. Bring you guys over here. Go. So again, we have four stencils on this particular thing. I don't think I'll use all of them. Um, but again, this is just another quick way to use a stencil to get a nice design. Ugh, sorry. We got, we got a burp. Ugh. So obviously in that one, we're just kind of filling in the whole area and the whole spots. Um, on this next exercise, I kinda, it's more about just using the, sh the, eight, the edge to create a shadow, right? We're probably still gonna fill in these big dark spots here, um, but like this area of the face, you see this, how it goes from this, this dark right here, right under the cheek where the blade is, and then it fades over to a light spot. So this next exercise is gonna be more about hitting those edges and just running a shade off of that edge, anywhere there's a nice edge. And um, yeah, it's again, super simple. Um, this one, depending on how you cut your stencil, you might be able to reuse it. Um, we'll see, but no promises. It's not like the first design where right off the bat, it is something you can transfer. And again, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of detail in there. Not, not trying to take up all of your day though on this, what, Probably gonna seem pretty basic to a lot of you guys, but if you're new, um, this is probably like valuable information that I, like it took me forever to grasp the idea of how to use a stencil in more than just like lay it down, spray it out, and then remove it. There's lots of ways you could use a stencil and, and not just the simplest ah, way, you know? Uh, let me see. I missed a question there. I seen a question mark. Um, how do you blend it together to avoid the stencil look? Yeah, so that's where your freehanding comes in, right? So if you feel like it maybe it's too stencilized, that's where your freehand comes in. You're gonna want to do a little bit more work around it. Um, you know, I wouldn't blame you if you use the brush or something like that. Um, 
like a paintbrush to give some edges some nice sharp looks because a lot of people right away are going to try to like soften it up and uh, what's actually happening is you have those sharp edges and if you don't have anything to complement those sharp edges right you're going to get this whole look where it just looks like blocks um, kind of like the one we did on the green here um, and more like a like Banksy's work, that's kind of more what it is, is where it's just filled in. Um, obviously, from there, you're going to want to build up and work off of that. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm going to say is uh, there's different ways. So that first way is, that's probably how it's going to come out 90% of the time for 90% of the people. If you spend a little more time cutting your stencil, and just putting a little more detail into it, you can make it look less blocky and more defined, and also the amount of layers that you put in. So like I just did, you know, we did four layers and, you know, three layers of gray and a white, but if you wanted to do maybe like a light, really light gray, and then a slightly lighter gray, and then, a, you know, and work your progression through maybe like six or seven types of different grays, and then maybe do two or three different layers of white so you can get those highlights in. And the more depth that you add into it, it will start reducing the amounts of like blockiness, the, the, that stencil look that everybody refers to. So, And uh, Thomas Thompson, I'm not uh, ignoring it. I was just trying to answer the question. Overtime pay, he says. I love this man. Thank you, thank you, Thomas Thompson. You the man. Um... <laughs> Dreaming that you were fixing your air conditioner. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, you can't help but pick up some small. I know the words were off, huh? She starts walking around the house using some words. You start feeling inferior. Then you, you gotta keep up. All right. <laughs> um. So again, so I'm just doing this. Now, the reason I'm only going to do certain areas and I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to just cut out the whole job. We do have more. And again, if you wanted to reuse this, this is probably the way you would go about it is by not cutting everything at once. So if you see that something is going to really not mesh too well with a cut, then just leave it for another cut. All right, so for example here, this bottom jaw, right, like the, the upper cheekbone and the bottom jaw here, they both need shading. Now, I could just go and cut it all at once, but there's no rush to, for the finish line. So I could hit this, <clears throat> this top one first, um, which will make that nice area nice to find. And then we could come back and on the next cut, we could cut in that bottom jaw and do the shadow on that. So it's almost the same as the other one, right? We're still cutting off these kind of these these areas, but we're being a little bit more. Um, I wouldn't say precise about it. Selective, maybe. And I'm definitely trying to leave these darkest areas out of it. I'm not trying to cover all that. Um, but you'll see the reason why I'm cutting it in this particular manner here in a second. A lot easier to explain once I actually already have it cut and on the board of why we did it that way. So now I'm just doing the top of the skull right here. I cut out those those parts there. And let me explain. Let's go back over here. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> oh my god! You have a degree, but you can't put together a tent. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I see. All right, so let me grab my airbrush here with some gray. Also, you'll notice that we're not starting with a big just outline of the whole thing. 
we're going to be, uh, like I said, it's a little bit more selective of what we're doing here. And all I'm going to do is just hit this bottom first edge here, right here. And remember how we were talking how it's like a, sh a shadow going up? So we're going to hit that edge dark, and then we can kind of bring in just a nice gradient. Right? So from dark to light. This here. See how it goes really dark on one edge and then light on the other edge. And that's that's what's on here. That's what's on there. It goes from really dark to really light. Now if, since we have the reference right here, we can go ahead and add. Go ahead and add some of that little detail right there. Let me, let me turn down this air pressure. But again, we're keeping it dark to light. Not going too crazy. Same thing with the eyes. Look, on the way here on the top of these uh, eyebrows, it goes from a nice dark area on this side. And it kind of lightens up as it goes up. There we go. Side of the brows going dark at the bottom, and they lighten as they go up, bam, same thing on this other side, I'm just going to work it in from the side, and there's a nice dark spot right here in the middle, get that in there, bam, right, then we got our skull kind of coming together right there. So that's the first little layer. And let me check, see who this is. My couch is very comfy. <laughs> Poor guy. So there's somebody here with some work. I have to take one quick second.
All right, what's up, guys? What did I miss? <laughs> oh no, the first thing I see is she has a real job. You're just an artist. Oh no. All right. So sorry about that interruption. Um, got a lowrider frame that just got dropped off. A lowrider bike frame. Um, super nice lady. I didn't realize it was the same person that had got the zombie bike done a while back. Um, and uh, yeah, she brought in another bike frame. She just let me know that the, the zombie bike frame that we painted, uh, that had to be a couple of years ago now, a few years ago, um, that she won first place at the Lowrider Super Show here in uh, Springs just a couple weekends ago. But apparently she's working on something fresh. Fresh for them boys out there. Uh, um, but yeah, super nice lady, um, and yeah, they came all the way up from, all the way down from Denver, uh, just to get this done. Okay, back, uh, to, uh, train of thought, what I was doing here. Uh, oh, right. So we have the top done here, or not done, but started. So we can go back to our stencil here. And now we can work in this bottom draw. Or, yeah, the bottom draw. Now, again, I'm just going to go in here. start working that bottom jaw in and again we're just gonna do some quick sections Probably do this piece here now. Uh, I don't do memberships, bro, but thank you. <laughs> what? I am buying you, and that means I pay. <laughs> what? Says I have a degree in electronics engineering. I want to do it for a living is retail merchandising. Oh no! Oh no! Wait to use. That's a great way to use that degree. Um, I would watch you paint that bike. Yeah, yeah. Probably it might make the stream. Um, uh, all right, all right. Cool. So now I'm going to go ahead, since we already have this here, we're just going to go ahead and maybe do some uh, details that we didn't get over here. So maybe here on this top, we can go ahead and we'll do kind of the shape of the teeth. little nice little piece there now we can go here and we're gonna have to try to line this up the best we can and again you can just flip back and forth you do have the jaw kind of lined up already Airbrush, and again, we're not just gonna just fill it all in. 
It's about building up certain spots. Use your reference. We have a nice dark edge on this side. We have a shadow coming in on the jaw, going towards the bottom. Pretty much hit the edge of those teeth, but then we have some nice little shadows coming down. Right there. Oh, oh! Might want to switch the camera. All right. So again, all we're doing is building up. We're not trying to just fill in the whole thing. Our skull is starting to take shape a little bit. Then last but not least, we'll cut one. Switching back again. Lots of cutting. Anytime you're dealing with stencils, you've been doing lots of cutting. Hope you like the cut. <laughs> Alright, so this last one. Right, you see how we have this edge here on this uh, on this here? We have it already from there to there. So we're gonna fill in the edge there. We're gonna fill in the edges anywhere where there's an edge. We wanna make sure that we get those edges marked off. So I'm just gonna come through here. We're gonna go side to side with it. We're not going to hit all the way that way, so it's quite okay. We're really just going to hit along this edge. So this this bottom, right? All we're going to do is use this edge up here. So this bottom edge, even though it's there, you could get creative with it if you want. Like I have just kind of, if a little bit of overspray hits it, it might look like a little crack or something. I'm not really worried about that. I'm worried about this top edge. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And then it does look like maybe we need to mark off the cheek here. And then the bottom jaw. Now this particular method is something I learned when I was uh, first beginning to get into frisket. Right? And one of the alternatives to frisket was cutting out, you know, stencils, obviously. Um, but um, it was all about getting the, just getting the stencil, the design laid in. So there was like an exercise of a zebra. And uh, even though you had all the stripes cut, right? There was also a way to get all the, the shading for the zebra. And that's what, what this was was doing that in a way that, um, what is the word I'm looking for here? I'm looking for a certain word and I can't think of it. And it was just the way it was taught and that it was a video that I had picked up at that time. Um, and it came along with a stencil that was already pre-cut of a zebra. And uh, that was what he showed was like, yeah, you could use the stencil cut to get all the lines in but then you still have to draw in all the shading of the zebra and in order to get it like properly and correctly in there um, he was showing a way of just cutting out the edges and using the edges to bring in the shadows and laying in a nice little design that you could follow along I wish I knew who was in that video. And I don't remember what he called it, but it's something that has stuck with me and I've used it again on lots of designs. We use it on all the, the how to airbrush tutorials. Maybe we don't use it all the way, but you'll see me sometimes where I'll make a cut and then I'll tell you to just fold it over. We don't need to worry about the folded side because all we're doing is hitting the, the edge that's cut. 
So, uh, look it up. Western movies are cool. Uh, uh, any advice for getting fine lines with the water eclipse? They're getting used to the controls. Yeah, you always just gotta practice. A lot of talking going on. Yeah, yeah, that's like I said at the beginning of the video. This is one of those videos where um, you'll probably learn something by just listening instead of actually following along or doing anything. There's no images to go along with today's video. This is just to show you what's possible with just a little few different cuts of a stencil and different ways of achieving, um, you know, a piece of artwork. Even if you start off with the same image. And it's something you see happen a lot. I see a lot of artists out there. And um, I've, in my time, I've seen people work designs um, that are very similar in very different ways. Um, and yeah, I'm just making you guys know some of those ways. So all I'm doing is just cut out some of those edges. Nothing too crazy. This time I'm going to make sure to switch the camera. Alright, so now we have our skull kind of being built up here. We're going to line our, our stencil up right here. I'm gonna do is just hit that that edge that we cut. It's really soft. Make sure we got a paint flow. And just softly hit that edge. Just the top edge. Just that side right there. And I made some cuts in between the teeth just to get the teeth in there. I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in. Use our reference, maybe you see some little dark edges or something right here, just some little details. Maybe we'll go ahead and get that in there. See some texture up here, go ahead and get that in. Right. I kind of missed the mark on the getting it just perfectly straight. It looks like up here, but it's perfectly fine. All right, so now last but not least, we will cut out the darkest areas. We can fill that in using this last one. Yeah. So this stencil is kind of more of a working light to dark. I know the first one's kind of the same way, but it's a little bit different. It's not really the exact same. Um, and that first method is kind of really designed at reproducing it a lot. This method is kind of more of you just want to get something nice and precise. And you can get in here and get these nice little fine cuts in here. And like always, the more time you take cutting and doing all the prep, the nicer the design's gonna look. So I wouldn't blame you if you take extra time. I'm just here to just show you some quick little things. I'm not I'm not trying to show off and create some crazy design that's gonna be unattainable to you and not explain anything. I'm just really just trying to show you something simple and quick and explain it as best as I can so that you understand. And also showing you the work happen live because I think a lot of people have a misconception of how quick things can and can't get done or whatnot. And uh, yeah, so there you go. I just cut out the main sections, the main dark areas. See it on that camera there. Me and the wife did about 300 miles on the bike. Oh, yeah. Nice ride. The 
It's half the reason for showing up to these feeds. Yeah, yeah. The community is is great. I wish you guys would have some input on how to get some of these stances down. There are going to be people and more newbies watching, you know, as time goes on. So we're just going to try to line up our stencil here. our skull kind of laid in there now this is where the point where you take your reference picture right and you start working in some gray and this is how the way that you get rid of that uh, blocky look I guess on this particular style but it's pretty much laid in for you you just kind of got to go in and again just lay in those little details that you see anything like that Already there. Probably, look, I still can. So I'm going to use this last piece here to do a little bit of outlining on these teeth. Got sucker out of there. And this bad boy back in here, line it up. Hit that little edge right there, bam. Now we have the edge of our teeth right up in there. And again, just going in there. Oh my gosh, who is it? What is it? Pretty much got our our skull in there. a difference and this one doesn't have any white see this one we used white this one the white you see is the white from the, the actual picture itself now if you wanted to obviously you can go back and do some more white highlights and stuff but this method here it's all about keeping those areas blocked off in this one we started off by spraying off gray right and creating that tone in this one here we actually avoided all those areas and it worked specifically in those dark spots and then built it in to create that skull. Now the big question um, and I don't think I don't think it'll work with this particular one uh, but we could try and let's see if we can make it fast same way that I did that other one. So if I come in here 
And he says like, okay, I'm gonna try to work this thing real quick. I've got a little shadow going that way. We've got some details right here, bam. Shadow going that way. We've got some details right here. This was the only reason I tried to like cut it in a specific method was to see if we could make it into a fast uh, design. Go. This takes a little bit more thought, just so you know right up front. Takes a little bit more positioning. You gotta bear with me guys this is the first time I've ever airbrushed you know especially live you know I'm kind of nervous so you know just just keep that in mind you know with my nerves and, and all that stuff's working man my adrenaline's flowing yeah, not quite not quite like is this this right here, when you do it, it's like, well, by the time you're done, it's like it's done. Suddenly you just do a little bit of wipe and blam. This one, you definitely have to come in. And you're going to have to do a little bit more details. But it's definitely all laid out for you. Just got to go in there and fill it in. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's still still pretty decently quick. You could get one of those done. <clears throat> uh, right on, Carl. We'll see you later. Skull Squad, go get that new shirt that's out. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, if you're not aware, there's new Skull Squad shirts available on the MikeSpress.com website. Go ahead and get yourself one if you want to support the channel and you want to get yourself a nice shirt, wear. Uh, they are pretty nice. I, I was going through them today. I was packing some of them up and they're pretty nice. I like the quality. Just the shirt itself without the design. Like They're nice shirts. I like the shirts. So, uh, in high school, we had his growling down to a T. Couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. High school was such a long time ago. Anyway, but yeah, these ones here, we, we didn't do any whites. Those are laid down as the, as the, the white is the actual white from the, from the canvas itself. Perfect. Okay. Last but not least, we can just leave that uncovered. 
The tape ripped off some of my paper there. It's okay. Alright, so let's get on to this. So what is the way that I like to do it? It's the way it is, that it's been done. The way that I like to do it. The way that it is, is supposed to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not really. Um, so there is no right way, right? So any of these ways that you choose, um, and honestly, I would de the way that I choose it depends on the design or the project. Um, you know, literally depends on the design and the project. So if I'm painting this on something and then I paint it on something else, those two ways of doing it could vary greatly, right? Sometimes it's the material, sometimes it's something that's curved, sometimes, you know, you just want to get it to look a certain way, sometimes you have to make 20 of them, whatever the case may be, there's different ways of achieving stuff. You don't have to always just follow one way. Okay, now we're going to take the last way that I like, and again, this is also going to seem pretty familiar if you've done any of the tutorials that I've put out and all I'm gonna do is start off by cutting out the main design the one thing you will notice out of all these designs and all these methods that we're doing today is that on all of them, I am cutting away from the surface. Right, so we're painting over here, I'm cutting over here. Typically on the how to airbrush, uh, the tutorials and stuff, we cut directly on the hard paper, you know, we try to be careful. This is kind of, you could do this on anything. So if you're painting on a helmet, on a tumbler like James does, if you're painting on lures and you need a a stencil for your lures and you want to get that same look lure after lure after lure you could cut out again the patterns that you need and then you could just go lure by lure by lure color by color by color and by the end time you're done you'll have your nice uh, design set in so now I'm gonna use this this piece this one right? the one that we just cut out and I'm gonna start off by cutting out the darkest spots This time we're going dark to light. This is probably the most common method and that's probably why I left it to the end. Because this is, this is elementary stuff even though the way that we're going to do it is probably taking it to where, you know, if you've been airbrushing for a few weeks, you kind of know like, oh yeah, you put a stencil down, you spray it, and you remove it, and that your outline, you know, or whatever it is. Here's kind of how you progress from that. Um, and now in this particular case, I'm going to use these these white bits in here. And I'm going to cut those out like if they're part of the background, like black. And also those areas between the teeth. some of these areas between the teeth right here trying to make sure to keep our paper nice and straight and again I know I've said this already multiple times but I'm just using paper just for demonstration purposes if you're doing this at home if you're doing it on an actual project or something you know, or if you're doing it just because you want to repeat it and you want to do it over again you want to practice it again and again and again um, I would definitely use a, a thicker material. Alright. 
But wait, there's more! Yeah, yeah. What's up, Blue? Welcome back. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna... I just want to get these teeth... Outlined in there. It's easier to show you what I've actually cut. I just do this in the back. So what does that look like? Does that look like a stencil sold on most popular websites? If you type in airbrush skull stencil, you'll probably get something that looks like that. And here's how they made it. Right? They just take a skull. Just cut out the darkest bits. Blammo. Right? So here's how we're going to work this real quick. And we'll probably make a couple layers, but we'll try to see how it looks after just two quick little layers. So again, we're just going to put this guy right in the middle. Let me switch cameras. I definitely need to get one of those one of those like stream decks. So I can just have it right here and I can just click, switch camera, click, switch camera, boom. Guys, order more cameras. We need more equipment. My me, order more cameras, order more shirts. We need more equipment, order more shirts and stencils. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna hit this light. Nothing too crazy. All right, then I'm gonna bring in our stencil we cut. Fill in those dark areas. Boom. Bim, bum, boom. Bam. And that, that, like, that pretty much looks like I see airbrush stencils sold like that all the time. Right. Nothing too crazy. We're gonna cut a second layer just to make it, just to make it nice. Get a blade here, and I'll tell you what, we'll edge out the teeth and the cheeks. The good thing about having the darkest spots done is we don't have to worry about too much. Again, this is just another way of getting that same design. And I see people all the time. They're always commenting on videos or asking questions and or telling people about having to do it a certain way. This video is me telling you there is no specific way to get your artwork done. All right? If you want to start off this way, you want to start off, you know, if you want to start off this way, you want to start off that way, you want to start off this way, wherever your adventure takes you and your particular project, the only thing that's going to matter is the result. And again, keep your ego in check. Make sure that what you think looks good actually looks good. Now, what I like doing is asking kids. <laughs> you ask a kid, don't don't like go see them into saying it looks great. Just go, hey, what do you think of that? Ah, oh, I don't like that. No, oh, that looks ugly. They'll tell you straight up. Kids don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stencil surgeon for sure. Yeah, and this is a small little paper. So, you know. But 
But yeah, all I'm doing is just gonna get those outlines in. Now, as we venture forth in the airbrush journey, um, what's going to end up happening, a lot of the how to airbrush tutorials, we are probably going to be switching on a, to a cut off the paper method. Right? So in the past, like I said, we've laid down the, the line designs and we have tons of those videos. Again, if you go on mikesbrush.com, there's a tab that says airbrush videos right at the top. You can click on that. It'll show you a bunch of videos. I need to update it. There's still more videos that I need to add. We have tons of videos uh, walking you through some very nice designs. Some basic, some more advanced. Uh, but they all kind of walk you through a cut on the cut on the canvas method right so cut on your project method as we go forward we will probably start venturing off into a more cut off the canvas method and we will use these probably these three different varying methods to achieve some artworks uh, at least for a while until we switch off to a different method which the method after this will probably be using frisket and or like gold mask or something like that um, because that stuff again is just slightly more advanced. So all I'm doing is just marking off the teeth here. So now we got that second section marked off there. Good. Get our airbrush here. in here we're going to lay in some of that shading here we'll mark off the teeth lay in some of the shading on the cheekbone coming up lay some of that in there the other cheekbone a shadow coming off the brows on both sides going to lay in the teeth on the bottom So we can remove this guy. And there we go. We kind of have our pretty, we have a pretty good layout of, of our skull already. Like, it doesn't really take much. Now, me from here, I just want to work it freehand, right? This is like freehand material, freehand glory to really add in, like if I wanted to add my own flair, this looks really good. Like from here, I can make it into an angry skull, a happy skull, a sad skull, whatever I want, just from there. Now, if your whole intent is to just follow along with your image, obviously you just lay another, you know, do another cut of whatever your next area is. Like say if we wanted to make an angry skull right here, which is what I want. Just come and give this guy a nice aggressive brow. reason I said I like this method probably the best is probably because of this because you're just laying down a really simple foundation but it's detailed enough that and it's already everything's in proportion all you got to kind of do is just kind of go ahead and add your flare and 
And that's it. That's it. Two cuts. Because we cut that one, and we cut that one. Right? And then we laid it in. And look, just a little bit of shading. And we have our skull in there. Now with this one as well, we started off by laying in gray. So all I would do is just come back in with a little bit of white, a little bit of white. Too crazy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Speed test again. All of these. Again, it's all speed test. So we'll start up here. Let me grab my airbrush real quick. Okay, ready, set, go. Speed. We'll lay that in. Bam. Line up our next one. Looks good. Got one in there. Oh, you know what? It's all right. It's all right. I was going to say, we forgot to lay down the, the other stencil, but it's fine. We have that in there. Now we can come in with this one. Let me um, turn it straight again, okay? Line that sucker up. Right about there. And there you go. And so this one probably produces the less blocky effect of all of them because it does rely a lot on, on freehand, right? So you gotta come in here and you gotta work that freehand in. It's not, it's not done. Right? So actually I should, before I come in with the white, I need to come in with gray. Right, so we need to go in here, we'll do this. Good. Then we can come back in with some white. Dropping some highlights. Bam. Not bad. Not as fast as the others, but eh, not bad. Eh. But anyway, guys, hopefully today's video helps you guys out in some way or another. Let me get, get rid of that one. I could get rid of uh, this one as well. We could do a little bit of this. I could do a little bit of that. Take this guy out of here. Show you guys. So the first method was like this, right? And again, this is more of a method inspired by like Banksy, where he got those, he gets those quick uh, graffiti designs done. And um, this is more than likely the method he uses. He just kind of selective of what colors he fills them in all the way completely. 
The second method is the one I like the most for, say, you're doing type of fine art or something. Um, and the reason is because usually when I do that type of artwork, I like to leave the white of the canvas and use as little white as possible. And then this method is my favorite for using for if I'm looking for speed. Speed, son. So if I'm looking to make them a little bit more characterized and um, I'm also looking to just do them one over another after another, I'm having a nice setup of these. It's pretty good. Let's see here. There you go. So hopefully that video helps you guys out. I should have done them all the same level. <laughs> it would have looked better. But uh, yeah, hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, just a quick explanation of different ways of achieving the same thing. What is essentially the same thing, right? Across all three of these. It's just a nice skull. Obviously everybody's gonna have their own style, their own little details or whatever. But you could get there no matter where you start or where, which route you want to take. It's easy to get there. So hopefully that answers some of your guys' questions. Um, and yeah, as always, I appreciate you guys all watching today's video. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> oh, okay. Highlights make all the difference. How many brushes you got going? So I only used two airbrushes today. Um, so yeah, thanks again for the great tips. You're very welcome, things. Thomas Thompson, Mike knocked them skulls up. Yep, glad you like them. You like the middle and the right column. Yeah, I mean, they're all nice. Like I said, everybody's gonna have their preference or their own style that they like. I'm not. You know, I'm not particularly one or the other, really. Like I said, it's really more, to me, it really depends more on what project and, you know, the overall style that you might be going for. Um, sometimes some of this, you know, it looks really good on a shirt and then just put some nice lettering over it. It just looks really cool. This is obviously, you know, more fine art. There's a lot of detail in this. And this one is just like, you could put this on just about anything. Motorcycle, car, truck, bike, shoes whatever you want this and it looks really good like nobody's going to complain about this right and yeah honestly if anybody complained about any of these i just smack them around shut up paint it yourself next time <laughs> right like yeah, just leave me alone i painted what i could you do it next time <laughs> but anyway hopefully again it helps you guys out don't be uh scared when you're getting started just to experiment away again with the stencils and what you can accomplish. Um, you know, this is just a simple way of just creating a piece of artwork by layering the different stencils all together. Um, and yeah, you can achieve some cool looking stuff. Again, we just used a skull for today's example, but you you can do this using people, using logos, using just pretty much anything. Um, and you can achieve pretty much the same looks. Um, so yeah. Uh, lettering is also one that I'll say a lot. If you want to create some fancy lettering, like uh, you know, a lot of logos will have fancy lettering. You could create a multi-layer stencil, and you can knock it out and make it look super cool every time. You know, especially if you want to do like a chrome effect. But if you got to do like a hundred shirts or something, and you just cut out this this multi-layer set of stencils, and and you can get them all done, and they all look crisp and clean and nice. Um, and yeah. So yeah, anyway, um, hopefully it helps you guys out. Thank you guys again for all the support. Make sure you guys can go and get yourself some nice stencils uh, or one of the new Mike's uh, Skull Squad shirt uh, available at the Mike'sBrush.com website. There's more videos like this, and so if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like them, you want to just see more instructional videos, there's a whole list of instructional videos right on that website. It makes it super easy. Uh, some of them even have like free stencil designs that you could download, you could use, you can follow along at home. I appreciate all your guys' support, so make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. Consider joining the Skull Squad uh, down below. So if you notice in the chat, some of our members there have that nice skull next to their name. Uh, the way you get that is by joining the Skull Squad down below. It's, it's really cheap, it's like two bucks a month. Um, but like, I, like I've said before, that two dollars a month is probably way more than we'll ever see on ad revenue. 
um, on a monthly basis, if, even if you watch every single video, every single ad. Uh, we, we make pennies on those, you know, so we really do appreciate when you guys join in. Uh, and or, again, if you want to buy any of those stuff off the website, it really helps out a lot. And uh, hopefully we can dedicate a lot more time and a lot more equipment to making these videos a lot better and nicer for you guys. I'm out of here. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. We'll see you guys in a few days. Have a great one. Bye-bye.